Okay, wait, I need to find my phone. Okay, okay. Okay! Hello everybody, welcome. We're on the floor of my bedroom again. I get comments under my videos sometimes. They're literally my favorite comments to read ever. People being like, oh my gosh, I, you know, started getting back into reading because of your videos. I want to get back into reading. I want to become a reader, stuff like that. It makes me so happy. It fills my heart so much. <laughs> um, But it sparked the idea for this video, but it's something I wanted to talk about anyway, because people in my real life, once they figure out that I love reading so much, are always like, I don't understand how you can just like love reading so much. I just have always loved reading my entire life. Over the years, I've realized I have just created so many reading habits or like things that I do that are about books that make reading so fun and so addicting for me and if you've been on my channel a lot of these things like you will probably have like noticed them or picked up on because they're literally just habits like I just do it all the time I've never like really fully explained everything so I literally have a list on my phone of all these reading habits that I have Pinterest boards playlists like things like that makes you become obsessed with books makes you become so addicted to reading and I feel like if that's your end goal then I would just share some of the things that I do in case you want to try any of them out for yourself so I'm gonna go through the list and i'm gonna explain everything and i'll give you like examples and everything like that too but also just a quick disclaimer before we begin i don't think that reading is like the superior or like smarter way of like consuming any type of story like i don't think that at all because reading is like not the most accessible form of media for everybody so that being said like if you try reading and you like and you genuinely don't like it doesn't work for you there is genuinely like nothing wrong with that i promise it just all depends on the person like, like for example for me i've like kind of given up on trying to like really get into reading graphic novels and comics all the graphics and all the photos will help some people but for me me, it's like very distracting I get overwhelmed and it's hard for me to follow the story so in that same way and if you don't like reading like novels and stuff like that then there's nothing wrong with that what is the saying don't try to fit like a square peg into a circle hole you guys know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I just want to get rid of any of like the elitist like attitudes that come with reading sometimes. Okay, the first thing that I have on my list that I do all the time, all the time, and it makes such a difference. I make Pinterest boards for different book aesthetics, character aesthetics, and or trope aesthetics. People ask too, but my Pinterest is always linked in the description. Um, I'm just called Sunny Kim on there, but Sunny Kim is like the most generic name ever. Like there's no way that you're going to find me if you just search up Sunny Kim. So I have it linked in my description. <laughs> this is my Pinterest account. I have two. I have a personal one and I have a book specific one. And so on this book specific one is literally just to make Pinterest boards uh, literally about every single book I've ever read <laughs> I'm not even joking so if you aren't familiar with Pinterest to me I just use it as like a space to make vision boards and so you can like put all these photos together in order to like put them in one collection and then you can look through it and see like a cohesive aesthetic about something for example starting off small I have one called POV you love books and the description is I like books and maybe three people and this Pinterest board is just literally all about um loving books as an aesthetic. This is one of my favorite boards. If you ever want to motivate yourself to read or anything like that. Here is one for characters. I have a board called My Core Six. Um, and this one is all the characters from the Addicted slash Calway Sisters series by Kristen Becca Ritchie. I literally just have an aesthetic, different photos that I felt represented each character. And so anytime that I'm reading the book series, I go back to this board and I look over it. And just like seeing the aesthetics all together, it just makes it so fun. Like creating the boards, like exploring Pinterest and like putting together the perfect aesthetic and like piecing together all of your favorite photos and being like, that is exactly what I think of when I think of this. This exactly reminds me of this character. It's just so satisfying and it's so fun. I get lost in like Pinterest rabbit holes for hours and hours and hours. I love my enemies to lovers Pinterest board. Love this Pinterest board so much. Because you guys know how I feel about enemies to lovers. Oh my gosh, just look at it. Of course, you know that I have one for friends to lovers too. Let me find it. Yep, exactly. This friends to lovers one, so good. It is just so fun to make them for books. You can like really let your imagination run wild and just curate it exactly to how you want to imagine it. So yeah, make Pinterest boards for anything you want, anything. Next one is one that I kind of started doing recently, which is playlists. In the same way that I create Pinterest boards for different books and characters, if I feel super strongly, I will create whole playlists playlists for different characters. I do have playlists for different tropes too, like enemies to lovers, friends to lovers, academic rivals. <laughs> academic rivals to lovers playlist. Oh my god. Here's my playlist for Will Herondale. It's called With Hope At Last. If you listen to all the songs in order, it is his entire love story. Recently, what I have been doing is looking up playlists on Spotify for different books that I'm reading because other readers will have made playlists and people are so talented. <laughs> Let me say that. People are so good at making these playlists. And then I just, let me grab them. Oy. What I have become accustomed to doing is using these bead headphones. Shout out to my sister for giving these to me. I'll literally lie down exactly on this bed, like upside down, over my head where my feet should be. I don't know why I have to do it in that position. I would just lie down on my belly. I would put these headphones on because they're noise canceling. Oh my gosh, this sounds weird. And my AirPods aren't noise canceling. I will go on Spotify and I will listen to the playlist that people have created while I'm reading the book. It is just, I used to be someone who like, for the most, 
most part for like silence but this was such a game changer it just hits so different let me tell you especially if your playlist is on shuffle but then like by chance the perfect song comes on at the exact perfect time just by chance it hits you so hard it's so unexpected that happened to me recently i literally started to cry it was so much I highly recommend doing that if you can't find a playlist you can also contribute your talents and make a playlist i'm sure that everybody would appreciate that very very much obviously if music is like super super distracting this would probably not work but if you do like listening to music while you read just search up playlists i promise you it will change your life okay next oh i need to grab something else for this i should have just grabbed everything that i need here it is oh my gosh it's so hot in here by the way there is a heat wave in ontario for some reason so the next thing is to to write down quotes slash scenes slash dialogue from books that you love I use this notebook I have a whole video about my book journaling this is what I count as my book journaling even though it's like a really really bare minimum book journal oh my gosh I'm actually almost finished this one look at that flip through it's literally just all text it's not pretty like I don't make it to be pretty I literally just do it to have in one place all of my favorite quotes and scenes from a book for the most part you guys know I read ebooks those are all the physical books that I own and when you read ebooks you can highlight and then all of your highlights will be saved if I'm reading a book and there's something that I really really love in it I will just highlight everything that I love and then after reading the book I will go and just copy down every single highlight word for word that I have so I have so many many books <laughs> I have so many books in this and some of them take up so many pages like a million pages and some of these scenes will be like literally pages upon pages in the actual book and I'll literally write it all word for word for word and it'll take up several pages in this journal the feeling of being able to go back anytime you want and just have like a compilation all of your favorite moments in a book there is just nothing like it so special if you ever see me and I have this book like don't approach me, I'm probably like emotionally vulnerable. This is like a literal piece of my heart, I'm not even joking. If you know, you know. Kind of similar, recently like annotating books have really been popping off. Like I used to just do this as the equivalent of annotating because I don't have physical books anyway to annotate so I can't like tab or like make pretty highlights or make pretty notes or anything like that. But I have acquired more physical books recently so this is like the most physical books I've ever owned in my life I'm pretty sure. And I'm literally- oh let me find it. For the most part actually if I annotate a physical book it's so that I can give the physical physical book to someone as a gift. That's why I bought this book on Prime Day. I know. Sorry. I'm sorry. I just needed to scam Jeff Bezos. I promise it's the only time I'll do that. Yeah, this is one of my favorite books ever. I'm going to annotate this entire thing and then give it to one of my best friends. For the most part, with physical books, that is the reason that I'll do that. But I said for the most part, I read ebooks. Recently, what I have been doing is that if there's a book that I, for some reason, really do want to annotate or I want to put on my Instagram or something like that, I've become like an ebook annotator. I've started like annotating books like this, like the ebooks that I read. I'll put photos and stuff here so that it makes better sense. I've started doing that. So yeah, if you you don't have physical books but you still want to annotate where there is a will there is a way i read it on my ipad so this is the time traveler's wife but like this is how i started annotating it. but like i said if you want to see videos about like how i annotate physical books and ebooks then i can do that too yeah i think annotating is a fun way to like personalize a reading experience always makes for like cute photos or like i also love sending pictures of my annotation to a specific friend that it reminds me of i've done that to so many people the next couple are not as much like physical things to do but like mental things so the first one is to search up fan cast i don't know if it's because i'm like old now my brain is becoming fossilized now sometimes like i have a hard time imagining like characters so when that happens i really recommend searching up fan cast for it the main places that i search up fan cast are on pinterest i love pinterest so much i love pinterest <laughs> so if you search up whatever whatever character for the most part like nameless models on pinterest are going to come up or you can search up whatever character name and then the word aesthetic and then it'll just, it'll just show you like a whole array of aesthetic of again nameless pinterest models that you can use to, like build up the character in your head so i do that a lot and that's really helpful for the most part i'll probably also end up putting it into a pinterest board but then the other thing discovered recently and has really been a game changer if you search up whatever book title okay i'll do the seven husbands because i'm sure that there's one for the seven husbands if you just google the title of that book and then fan cast one of the top websites that might come up it's called mycast.io this website has been such a game changer oh my god it looks like this it's a place where people can contribute who they imagine as a character and then other people can upvote which fan cast they agree with and then the most popular ones show up at the top for like all of the different characters so this is old Evelyn, young Evelyn. This website does it with real actors. So if you would prefer like having real actors, this is so perfect for you. But then if you don't agree with any of the fan cast, you can also click on the photo. It shows every single actor who 
was like nominated i guess if you don't agree with like the top like most popular one you can look at all the other options and then like from there you can like choose who you want to imagine so yeah these are all of like the evelyn candidates okay the next thing i do this all the time mildly change character description if it's like not sitting right with you slash for the most part what this means for me is that i mildly change things about like the male main character so that he's like more attractive to me let me explain such a good example of this is things we never got over by lucy score which i still haven't finished reading but i explained this in one of my videos but something about like the male main character there's some things about him that i just really don't like and it's not like like these things are problematic or anything it's just like my specific type slash my specific preference but i wanted to keep continue reading the book and so i will like literally just change mild things in my head it should be mild things by the way not things that are extremely pertinent to the character's identity i know that you know what i mean don't be erasing people's identity but if it's like things like for example with this one he just kept talking about having a beard and they kept talking about it and i was like why are you doing this and so in my head just every time that they would just mention that i would literally just live in denial and be like well that didn't happen that is not my truth because i just wanted to keep picturing lucas till so yeah some might say that that's toxic but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes I, okay, I don't know how to explain this i'll like start reading a book see like this one pinterest photo or something and be like that is exactly how i'm picturing this person in this book but they literally have like no similar character features mostly it's hair color okay yeah for the most part it actually is hair color that i change but it's just like i don't know it's like just changing like a white boy's hair color from like blonde to brunette you can think what you want if it's just hair color or eye color like on a white boy like I'm sorry. Like, what's the big deal if your eye colors change with the moon, change with the weather? If that's what you claimed in high school, the next thing. Something that I stand by to my very core it is that if you want to watch the movie or TV show before reading the book, literally who cares? Just do it. I've done this for so many books and it's literally made the book so much better. I don't even care that people think that that's like a sin for some reason. Sometimes the book is not doing it for me and I just know. I just know that if I watch the movie, I will love the book 10 times more. This happened with Shadow and Bone. This happened with The Hating Game. This happened with The Time Traveler's Wife. In my opinion, the normal people tv show is way better than the book little fires everywhere the tv show is amazing i think that if you want to watch the tv show before you read the book then you should do that and you know what a lot of the times like watching the movie makes me motivated enough to read the book it makes it so much easier to visualize it in the book now the hating game is randomly one of my favorite books to read even though i know for a fact that i would not bat another eye at the hating game if i had read the book without watching the movie but now no now i'm in love with josh templeman because of the actor austin stole just do it who cares no one cares and you don't even need to tell anyone like who cares okay now Next is to find your people. Okay, this is one that I think is really cute actually. Find your people. There's a community for everything. There really, really is a community for everything. I feel like now it's so much easier than ever to like find a niche community for like a book that you love. Nothing is going to feel better than having all of your excitement and having all of your love for a book just affirmed by other people who are also looking for affirmation. It's amazing, life changing. That is literally how I started my channel because I wanted a community of people who loved books. You don't even need to tell anyone. You can make a whole separate account for something if you want to. If you're just embarrassed and scared people are gonna find it, like don't let that be the reason. It's stops you just make a separate account make a secret account having a community like where you feel like you belong is so important you can look on tiktok instagram youtube whatever go down reddit rabbit holes whatever okay be careful on reddit actually okay next this one could be controversial but i have been this way since middle school spoil yourself i'm someone who has never had a problem with being spoiled movies books tv shows whatever in fact i kind of like doing it i, I which makes you the devil i know i know for the most part i would spoil myself on like the main couple or like who ends up with who or like if there's a good slow burn i need to find that out before i read the book before i invest my time but when i was in middle school i discovered this wonderful wonderful website called wikia and it's just like so many they're kind of like wikipedia's but for like specific book series specific tv shows one for anything you can imagine people just have like whole pages on pages about characters and their relationship with other characters i would just scroll through that all the time and just read exactly everything that happened to a character every single spoiler to figure out if there's like a good like relationship in it that like i could fall in love with and will make me want to read the book and that's how i found some of my favorite book series slash some of my favorite tv shows of all time i don't think there's a problem with that if you want to spoil yourself do it do it who cares no one needs to know no one needs to know okay and the last Last thing that I have, I know that in this community, like on booktube, a lot of people have a hard time doing this. So yeah, here's the validation that you need. DNF books. If you don't know what DNF means, it means did not finish. It's when you just start a book and then you like for some reason don't like it, don't want to continue and then you stop reading. To me, it feels like a no brainer because I've been doing this my whole life and I have never had a problem with quitting. I'm a quitter. I am a quitter because to me, it just never made sense to continue with something that wasn't like adding to my life or making me happy. If it was detracting from my life, then I'm going to stop that. You know what I mean? If I don't like a book, I don't feel 
feel any obligation to like have to finish it and in the end it's just saving me time then I can shop around for the books that I really want to read I feel like you can prevent a lot of book slumps that way too um, because you can just keep shopping around until you, have, you find a book that you're like so addicted to reading and that's just gonna make you love reading even more yeah don't force yourself to finish books that you genuinely don't want to read because then you're gonna not read <laughs> this is your sign to go DNF that book if you are forcing yourself to read a book. It's fine. Just put it down. You can come back to it later if you want. There's so many books that I've like started and DNF'd and started and DNF'd and started and DNF so many times. And then now it's like one of my favorite books of all time. Sometimes books are genuinely just not like good to be read at a certain time. Either you're like too young for it, probably appreciate it and love it a lot more if you're older. Why spoil that? You know what I mean? So that you don't waste your time not being happy when you're reading books when you could be happy reading many books. So that is all that I have on my list. If you guys have any like reading habits or things like, you know, other things like extra things that you do please comment it down below i'm so curious about what everybody does other than that that's gonna be everything hopefully this is helpful to somebody subscribe down below if you haven't already follow me on all my socials including my pinterest they're all linked in the description and i will see you all in the next one goodbye